Hi, this is Yohan Sapnil Bhartia and welcome to Let's Talk About AI. In this interview, we will discuss the importance of establishing a robust platform for building generative AI applications and cover key elements such as data management, model selection, scalability, cost, and system integration. We will also explain the importance of understanding the business needs before proceeding with the development of an AI application. We also chat about the spectrum of degrees of automation for business processes from co-pilot to autopilot and the tactics and strategies when implementing generative AI applications. So let's go and talk to Roman Kargowski, Principal Architect at Carrick. Roman, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, glad to be here. Thank you. Can you please share the experience that Carrick and you personally have with Genetive AI and the projects that you have done in this area? Carrick traditionally has been a developer platform company. Uh, when the company was started by ex-Googlers uh, four and a half years ago, we originally focused on DevOps, SRE practices, developer platforms. Over time, we all know LLMs, Gen AI became very popular and we were extremely interested. We originally started looking at the use of Gen AI and LLMs for our developer platform uh, use cases, analyzing logs, uh, Terraform files, um, error messages, doing a monitoring. But we slowly shifted our attention, not just to the DevOps and developer platforms, but also into the business cases. So for example, the way that we see Gen AI today, and you can see that on the slide that I show, roughly we break it up into four buckets overall. There is a creative bucket side of Gen AI where people are using it for image generation and those kinds of creative writing and art and design and that kind of thing. There is assistant type of Gen AI where we see people are uh, using that for co-pilot type of work in a sense it could be a co-pilot for developer, it could be co-pilot for somebody writing something or shopping assistant or healthcare advisor. Where Carrick is really focused is the industry specific and process improvement side of Gen AI. What we're doing, we're providing consulting projects and services to implement various vertical industry solutions using Gen AI. For example, in financial services industry, accelerating workflows. Um, we have customers that are using our services today where we deployed projects in production using Google Cloud Platform as well as Google Palm uh, Bison text models as well as Gemini text models. Um, we have a, an engineering team, LLM engineers, software engineers. Uh, we have CICD pipeline that we've built to deploy these projects very quickly and we're able to iterate and add uh, significant functionality very quickly for our clients because we build the base uh, to execute on. How do you see companies adopt generative AI and what is the roadmap that carry you would recommend or if you look at it from other perspective, how to get it started and where to go from there? As in most software projects or business transformation projects, we recommend crawl, walk, run approach. And what we've done with our customers in most cases is follow their pattern, take their existing business process. And as you can see on this slide, this is an illustration. Uh, the first phase we call a co-pilot, where from a traditional business process, what we do, we automate parts of the process to shorten the time it takes to execute certain steps. In some cases, even remove certain manual steps for example, if it's searching for certain data in PDF repositories or other unstructured data, the co-pilot is an intermediate step where we accelerate the business process and we make it run quicker, make it more repeatable, more reliable. And then the next step after the co-pilot is successful and proven, as the accuracy level of the co-pilot gets to a certain threshold, for example, 95, 98, 99%, then we can start using the autopilot approach where all of the manual steps are completely eliminated and the business process is completely automatic. So there's a lot going on in, in here and the roadmap 
from traditional business process to co-pilot to autopilot may take one or two years. Um, where we have customers today is using this co-pilot phase and we're moving them into the future of autopilot where no man manual work is required. Then we look at this whole journey. What are the difficulties that you have faced when building Gen AI applications? With Gen AI applications, we run them in the same manner as, first of all, any other software project and number two, any other AI-based project. But more specifically, um, so all, all of those difficulties are the same. So I'm not going to repeat them because everybody's familiar. Like the classic, you have to have a good training data, you have to have ML ops, you have to have um, software deployment pipeline. So what is specific to Gen AI projects, what I'm showing here, is everybody is familiar with the traditional RAG pipeline, retrieval augmented generation. And it's very easy to start with. Like if you look at Google search, you can find 50 lines of code that implements your RAG pipeline. In that 50 lines of code, you can take one document, extract the data, embed it, store it in a vector database, and then you can run queries. So that's kind of what you see on this slide. However, what we found in the real world is that to build a scalable and resilient system, you have to be able to ingest all kinds of different documents, different formats, different um, complexities. And it's not always easy. Like that 50 lines of code from a blog article where you grabbed it from somebody else from medium.com doesn't handle all of those edge cases. Then you have to make the ingestion pipeline resilient. It has to be able to ingest gigabytes or in our case, terabytes of data in a repeatable, retriable, uh, reliable fashion. Then you have to go and figure out how to integrate your structured data and unstructured data because in most cases you have to be able to ingest data from databases, not just images, audio, or PDF files. And you need to be able to combine that data together. Then you start thinking about what is the proper chunking process because in the traditional red pipeline you just figure I'll chunk my text by whatever, 1,000 characters, 200 characters. You have to experiment and it's all use case specific. The chunking strategy is very important for accuracy. Um, you think about the fine tuning for embeddings model. That is a very important depending on a domain. The standard off the shelf embedding models may not necessarily understand your data very well. The other thing that we do um, we try to avoid this traditional uh, era where to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So we don't solve everything with LLM. We have a combination of traditional AI and LLM, as well as deterministic software engineering approaches to solve the problem. Uh, there is a lot of work on prompt engineering, including building templates for commonly asked questions, including building caches, permissions, access control. I think I'll speed up. You kind of get the idea. You also need to give people the bounding boxes like a red rectangle on top of the PDF file to show where you found the answer. Um, reduce the cost with cache management. You need to pick the right LLM model as well as potentially fine tune that model for your domain specifically. Uh, there are a lot of things, hyperparameter tuning, uh, proper choice of the database, scalability for the database, cost management, ML ops, and all of the other traditional software engineering that I mentioned. So these are just examples. It's not a complete list by any means. So we, we cover the AI side, we cover the gen AI side, as well as the software engineering, because you've got to have CICD and be able to deploy, secure uh, the platform and make it reliable. So these are just, again, some examples that we ran into, and that's what we're solving for for our clients. And then we are looking at just the pain points. I'm also curious, how how big is it, is cost a pain point? I mean, when you go and look at the discussions, there is a lot of discussions about the high cost of using LLMs. First of all, since you folks have been building it, is that true? And if that is true, how do you manage kind of this aspect of this system, the cost? The cost is a real important issue. And yes, we have seen that the cost may be a difficult 
um, thing to swallow. It depends on the application. And there is a naive implementation of Gen AI. And then naive implementation, just like in any other brute force implementation, the big O complexity uh, could be significant. So the, the big O of cost, what we call it, can just be completely out of control. So on this slide, some of the examples, and you could see on a horizontal axis, what I show here is the cost of running the Gen AI, depending on the approach that you use. If you're just using the standard prompt engineering or RAG, or maybe fine tuning, or even training the model from scratch, you could see the cost can increase, but depending on the approach that you choose, you can mitigate and reduce the cost by doing smart caching, by augmenting traditional Gen AI. Well, I don't think the word traditional maybe is quite applicable yet, but we're combining Gen AI approaches with other deterministic approaches. Again, not every step in the business workflow needs to be solved with Gen AI. So in a naive implementation, the cost can be very high, but in a highly optimized implementation, we can control the cost and we've been able to reduce the costs in some cases by two orders of magnitude. Um, so it can be done. Let's also look at the lessons that you learned um, and also based on the lesson and also this whole, you know, your own experience with it. Do you have any best practices that you would recommend for others? We have worked on Gen AI projects for about nine months now. And what we've learned is there's a combination of factors to be considered. I already mentioned you are running a regular software project. So the speed of deployment, ability to do it reliably, securely is very important. So you have to have the right platform at the foundation level. And the other thing is data is very important. You can only train your models and fine tune your models. And even with prompt engineering, you have to have a proper baseline. So it, again, we're reusing all of the good principles of software engineering and traditional AI methods. And for Carrick to be able to deploy solutions and build solutions for our customers faster. We have built what we call the accelerator. We call it automated intelligence accelerator. So what I show here on the slide is a very, very simplified picture of what we have built just from a logical perspective. And we separate it into four different tiers. So our, our experience building these projects shows you have to have very robust, flexible and reliable data ingestion. So that in itself is a significant uh, part of the picture. Then you have the query engine and the query engine, it needs to be able to connect to multiple different LLM models because usually one model does not rule them all. You have to be flexible depending on the question, depending on the environment, depending on the cost requirements, latency, we're able to switch and use multiple different foundational models. Uh, then there is a consideration of UI. Uh, we're able to build the UI. So I think that is frankly the easiest part. And then the shared services is cost control, um, IM permissions control, security, uh, monitoring, observability, SLAs. So all of that, instead of writing every time from scratch, we have built a reusable framework to deliver future engagements quicker. Uh, and that's where we encapsulated our lessons learned into that reusable framework. So when we engage with our customers, they're able to take advantage of what we have built so far and not have to build it uh, from scratch entirely. Roman, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, a great discussion there, great insights. Thank for your time. And I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was fun.